Hello and welcome again to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And today's topic is impact craters and the space rocks that cause them. Now, there are different categories of space rock that form craters, and I happen to have made a diagram to show you. So, space rocks that are all within our solar system, uh, we start out with the far-reaching ones, leftover pieces of ice and dust and rock that collect together, which we know as comets. Comets we see as they go around, they have a really long elliptical orbit around our sun, and we see them every so often as they do their flybys from and around planet Earth, where we can look up and see them in the night sky. Major examples would be like Halley's Comet. Next, we have very large space rocks the size of cars or mountains or even small cities. That is an asteroid. Asteroids are leftover remnants when planets were banging and forming into one another, and even some asteroids are classified as dwarf planets. They're that big. Now, the majority of asteroids in our solar system are located in the asteroid belt between the planets of Mars and Jupiter. And some planets, like Mars is the example, have adopted two asteroids as its moon, Phobos and Deimos. Now, you have meteoroids, which are smaller asteroids. They're a little bit bigger than a grain of dust, uh, but not as big as what you would have when you find an asteroid. And they are floating around, and they're, they're more abundant when they go around, and they can be escaped from other asteroids when they hit each other, and small fragments sort of with gravity get pushed out and fly out within past the orbit of the asteroid belt. And when they encounter our Earth's atmosphere, you have a fireball that forms. Some of us call them falling stars, and you call this a meteor. So meteoroids become meteors, and whenever you hear people say, astronomers say, look out for the Geminid meteor shower. Uh, that is where you have a large collection of space rocks coming in through the atmosphere at once. Dust, debris, material, and it creates a show of a meteor shower that we can see. So that's what this fireball represents, that meteor coming through the atmosphere. Now, a lot of meteors, when they hit the Earth's atmosphere, they completely burn up. There's nothing left over, and nothing continues through the atmosphere and hits the Earth. But by chance, if they are large enough, and they survive coming through the atmosphere completely, you have one that hits, and if it's big enough and strong enough, it will impact and make a crater. Uh, you call that, once it hits the surface of the Earth, a meteorite. A meteorite, sort of like certain rocks are called uh, ites at the end. What I like to say, and the way to, for me to remember is, you fall down and hurt yourself, you get back up because you're all ite, you're ite. So, a meteorite is okay because it hit the surface and it's there. So, those are the different levels of space rock that we'll encounter. Now, a meteorite is a very special rock, and that that is left over that hits the Earth, the remnant is mostly a hard metal core of iron or cobalt uh, that you have, and it's very dense, packed together when it hits the Earth. Now it's up to you for doing our next experiment to find your own version of what you want to consider a meteorite. I actually have three, so find three different examples in your home or from outside a rock. So the first, I have a, a small potato. It doesn't have to be a rock. So I have a little red potato as one of my examples. A larger shooter marble with a swirly twirly design and a smaller red marble that I'm going to be using as my three uh, meteor examples going through to form the meteorite impact craters. And as you're going through, you may find all kinds of different rock sizes. Sizes up to you. Uh, you may even find a really cool rock like this one. I rock and you rock, just so you know. 
So your rock possibilities can be anything you want them to be, small or large. But I do recommend you get three different sizes for three different impacts. Now, I do want us to go through and build our little piece of impact. So I have a bowl, a mixing bowl. I uh, recommend you get one. So this one's about a foot across, 12 inches. Uh, so grab you a mixing bowl. This one's not very deep. It doesn't have to be very deep. But as long as it has a wide rim to it, you can see when that impact crater, that asteroid, that meteorite that hits and impacts, you can see the ejecta that is formed from that impact. So a wide mouth bowl. You will need a measurement tool uh, of some kind, some markers, different colored markers, flour, and cocoa powder. The first thing you'll need to do is take your bowl, and I have, this one is four cups, Depending on how deep your bowl is or big your bowl is, this will be uh, a factor. But usually about one cup should be fine if you have little small asteroid pieces. So I have here, I put my flour into the bowl. Sort of flatten it out there on the table, loosen it up, even it up. And what you'll need to do is, this is the under layer of the earth. So this is the sub layer of the soil. So we're going to add some sort of topsoil to it so that we have a difference. Just a little a little sprinkling. You don't need much. If some of the bottom layer still shows, that's fine. So there we go. You have the sprinkling on the top. So you have now prepped your earth for your impact crater. Now, there are set parts of an impact crater that I wanted to go over before we actually make our own. I actually went ahead and made, with Play-Doh, on a plate, an impact crater. So, we have here, the Play-Doh represents, the different colored Play-Doh represents the Earth as this meteorite has struck the Earth. So, I'm going to take up this meteorite piece there and set it to the side and as you can see there's a big dimple in the middle of the plate and that dimple represents the impact crater. Now from around it you have the impact lots of debris has spread out around so let's label it. I actually have little labels so we're gonna label and learn the names in different parts of our impact crater. So the first section that we want to go to is called the floor. Just like in your house, you have the floor that you're standing on. So you have a floor of the crater. So when that impact happened, you created a floor on the bottom. There we go. So I have the floor inside that dimple. On that surface of the dimple, you have the floor. Now in the very center of, oh, they're sort of sticking together there, when I removed my meteorite from the middle, there was a little bit of uplift that happened in the very center. So in some more substantial hits of meteorites, larger ones, you have a little bit of uplift from the middle of your impact crater. And that uplift is called a central lift. So central meaning center of and lift meaning it lifts up. We're going to put that in the very center of that blob. We have our center uplift right there. And then when you get closer to the edge of your crater, you have, like in your home, you have the floor that stretches out and connects to what eventually hits the wall. So you have a wall of your crater, which is that area that is just starting to slope upward from the floor. And that is your wall. Then when the wall goes up and curves up to where it sort of touches where you reach a flat area of land, that is called the rim. Just like on a bowl, 
you have the wall, which is the upper side of the wall. Then you have that lip of the bowl that starts to flatten out. That is the rim of your impact crater. So set that along the rim. Just like that, we have our rim to our crater. And when you have an impact occur, lots of just stuff, debris, parts of the meteorite, parts of the earth that it hit, fly outward. You call that ejecta. That's one of my favorite words. You have ejecta that is sort of all kinds of rock debris that's been smashed, that's been melted, that's been vaporized, that's just been poofed out exits out so you got all these little pieces so there's a big old blob piece of ejecta there and it can stretch out for miles going out in all different directions from its impact so there we have ejecta which is left over from the impact and then just like light from the sun has rays when you draw a picture of the sun you have the round and you have those little rays that stick out. There are rays to an impact crater so that ejecta spreads out really far and really distant. You have rays and notice in mind there's the little lines that are all the way around just like sunlight coming from a picture of the sunshine. Rays that stick out. So those are the parts of a crater that we're going to be finding as we do our own drop tests. And those again are the floor, which rises up to hit the wall, then hits up the rim, and then you have ejecta, the bits and pieces that go out and around, and then you have from that the rays that spread out further from the ejecta. Now we're going to do and collect data with our impact crater formations and you're going to need to write in your journal I actually drew a picture of the parts of a crater and labeled them as I did when I made the Play-Doh example I do recommend you go online and you look up parts of a crater and you too can draw in your journal what it would look like and then I have my data table where I have in three different colors I've used orange blue and purple for my meteor drop one two and three and in each one of these meteor drops I have a test drop so I can sort of get a feel for what rock I have and see how it does the impact and how I can pick it out once I need to do the second drop and then three solid drop examples for each one. And then I drew a graph to plot our data, which we will do after we do all of our drop tests. So let's prepare our table area, let's prepare our drop area, and get our items that we need, our markers, our journal, our measuring device so we can measure out the depth and the rays, the diameter of the rays as they go about. So the first one I'm going to use is I'm going to use my potato piece and I'm going to do three drops with this. But I'm going to do my test one and then do my other test, and I recommend you find yours and do your largest, or you could do your smallest first. That is up to you. So here we go. I'm gonna drop mine. I recommend dropping yours from about a foot above your, there we go, there's 12, and do a countdown, three, two, one, poof. Now what you'll find, is it makes a mess. So I do recommend you either do it outdoors or you have a towel or a tablecloth covering your table. So I just dropped it here. Let me pause and do an aerial view for you so we can see what it looks like. So here is our aerial shot of the potato meteorite drop. 
Uh, as you can see, it landed in somewhat the center. And you can see that it did push some of the material out, so that would be considered our ejecta. And you see some of the rays, because of that under layer of white flour, sort of made it all the way out and also hit the rim of the bowl. So I have tongs here. So you can use your fingers, but if it goes in a little bit too deep, you can use the tongs and it helps lift it up. Set that out. And I'll zoom in a little bit closer. Notice as I zoom in, you have a little bit of uplift in the center there. And you have the dark of the wall where it took that surface layer and impacted it around. And then you have that white rim around the outside of the impact crater. So we're going to need to take some measurements so that we can denote these in our lab journal. So the first is uh, we're going to do a couple more drops and I'm going to write down my data and I want you to do your data drops as well because that was considered my test. If we're going to do our next drop we don't want the same impact crater so what we're going to do we're going to shake 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 the bowl and fill in your hole. If you want to sprinkle more of the cocoa powder on top, you can, but you don't have to. So let's go to our next drops. I will fill in mine, and then I'll go to the next one. All right, time for my drop test of my larger marble piece. So suspended 12 inches from the air, and drop. Now our test drop of our smallest sample size of our smaller red meteorite and drop. Now that I've completed all of my drop tests and I have collected the amount of data for each drop, which for each drop, not in counting the test drop, I did a depth, which how deep the deepest point of the impact crater was, and the ray uh, diameter, how far across the rays went, how far across, completely across, from there's the start of a ray to an end of a ray, all the way on the other side, what would that measurement be, that diameter of that uh, ray formation for each one. And with the graph, I have done two graphs, that one will represent crater depth, from the center, which will be your depth measurement. And we had the three drops, and I have the three different colors in each drop formation. And then the second graph is the ray diameter, and then our three drops, one, two, three, with our three different colors. And along the bottom of each graph, we have the diameter, our depth, in its inch number from one inch all the way to 12 inch or one foot. So I'm going to start doing the graphs. So I'm going to look for my crater depth for my first drop for the blue, which was my larger of the test drop with the potato. And I have a depth for my first drop of one inch. So I'm going to take the blue and draw out to the one inch marker. My next meteor drop, drop one depth was one and a half inches. So go out to the one inch mark plus halfway out one and a half. And then I have for my purple or my third drop which was the smaller red marble, one and a half inches, again the same as the other. So that is the first graph for the first drop. I'm going to fill in the others and we will see what our results are. So I have completed graphing my data from the data table uh, from each of the meteor drops, one, two, and three, not counting the test drop as our practice. And with the graph results, as you can see, that at the top there was some minimal depth, 
where it looks as though that meteor drop one, uh, meteor drop two of the potato had the deepest at two inches in depth crater. And oh, looks like we have a match here. We also had a two inch drop three of the large marble uh, as a two inch max. So that was for the crater depth. That was our largest on display there, but it looks like we have quite a bit more to measure down here in our ray diameters. And it looks as though that all three of the tests from Meteor Drop 1, the potato, went to 11 inches, which was the full width diameter of the bowl itself. So if I had a larger bowl, it may have gone even further in that number and it looks like with the drop number three of the large marble that one hit the 11 inch the max capacity of the bowl as well it looks like we have sort of a range here between four five and six with the other drops so uh to me from my conclusion of looking at my graph data it looks as though the larger the meteorite the further ray or ejector debris that will go out from your impact. So what is your results? Show us example pictures of your craters and your graph results and uh, share them in the comments below. And if you think you want to do more than three drops, go for it. The more data you have, the better your science will be. And with that, always remember, science never stops. Thank you.